Shadowversity t-shirts and hoodies. They are special. Available through Teespring, link in the description. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and something that is probably quite evident if you know anything about me or this channel, I really like swords. And when it comes to realistic, functional, authentic swords, there's almost none that I dislike. The only type of swords that I particularly dislike is when they're horribly designed and poorly misrepresented, bad balance, and all that sort of things. But that is kind of moving away from the historical side into the fantasy side. And as I look into fantasy depictions of swords, there is a classic type of fantasy sword that is horribly unrealistic, but I still love. I just, I, I think they're awesome. And that is super or huge, big, massive swords that if they exist in reality, they'd be impossible to use. Impossible to use effectively. I should add a kind of caveat there. Because supermassive swords are built, and like, how can I talk about supermassive swords without mentioning Michael Cthulhu? I mean, what a legend. Love you, mate. Love your work. Love your swords, and I love your YouTube channel, and even your documentary series that, uh, I guess, hasn't come back for a second season. We're all waiting! But we get your YouTube videos as well. So that can satisfy me for now. But, you know, Michael, he certainly grabs these swords and uh, he uses them to a level of effect, but it's also very insightful to see how difficult such massive swords would be. The two big, you know, famous super large swords that come to mind is, is of course, Cloud's Buster Sword and Guts's Massive Sword. I forget, I don't even know the name actually. And that's from the anime Berserk. But then you have massive swords that are in video games and video games, they love super large swords because they look awesome, okay? And oh, gee, super big swords, they're, they're very common. Ah, but you might say there's an easy thing to, you know, make super large swords far more practical and usable in real life. And that's if you had super strength and we're in fantasy. And there are so many situations in fantasy where people just have incredible strength and indeed Cloud and Guts, they have super strength, so they would be able to use them and they'd be effective. Or could they? Well, the purpose of this video is to explore just that. Even if you had super strength, how practical and functional would a super large sword be? But to explore this question properly, I need to leave the confines of my lovely studio here and go outside into the sun. <laughs> It burns! It burns! Oh, it's okay, but oh, it is a sunny day today. And look at that, a scene change and a wardrobe change. And yeah, Gamberson in the Australian summer, we're gonna sweat up a storm. The first thing that we need to understand when we're looking at how functional a sword is in someone's hand is the comparative weight ratio between the individual and the sword, because this is a very important point to remember. One of the things that you have to understand when using a sword, well, you don't actually think, need to think about it because the rate ratio between your sword and yourself is so great that the sword's own inertia will never be greater than your own. So when I want to accelerate the sword, so if I'm in a position and I just want to go in for a strike, Accelerating this and putting into motion is uh, quite easy. Now, what is the comparative weight ratio between the sword and myself? Well, I'm a bit of a heavy set guy. I weigh almost 100, right? And uh, average long sword is gonna weigh 1.5 kilos, which is 1.5% of my own weight. What's interesting about this, is as soon as we ramp up this weight, even by a little bit, suddenly using an average size sword can be very, very difficult. Not to say impossible though, because uh, of course swords became in much larger sizes. Now, I don't have a real great sword. I have used a real great sword in the past, and uh, this is a replica I made to get the right proportions, comparison, and for use in videos and stuff like that. And so, yeah, swords came in much bigger sizes, and standard great sword weight, you deal sometimes we'll get three kilos, high end very four, but around three kilos is the right weight. But still, as soon as you pick up a real great sword and start to swing it around, you notice a very, very big difference. Now, of course, this great sword is uh, way too light to get a good comparison on the type of maneuvers and stuff uh, because, yeah, it's too light to figure out. But I do actually have something that uh, is about the same uh, weight as a real great sword. And that's this thing right here. We're made out of hardwood, weighs about three kilos, and uh, I use this for morning drills when I'm going through a standard sword drills and practice and stuff like that. It's not the only thing I do. I use the rolling synthetic, which is this one right here, uh, to practice form, position, uh, and basically, you know, get the movement on my reflexes. But when I want to build up uh, strength in the right muscle groups, 
that's what this thing is for. And uh, yeah, this is about the weight of a real great sword. My goodness, you can feel the difference when you're going through your drills with this thing. Uh, also, you can get an idea of what it's really like using a weapon that's much, much heavier, but you can use it. This is, this is the thing. Even when you're, you know, practicing going through your drills, this is the whole point of doing it. And you can even, you know, ugh, get away with doing, but you've got to really use the, the weight, even one-handed. And when you do a, thing, a, a strike like that, holding it out like this, my goodness, it's hard, right? Then lifting it up against its own weight, just like that, very difficult. This is very much a two-handed kind of sword. But when you're using it in two hands, you, you know, there's very few sword maneuvers that you're unable to do. But this is about as heavy as you'd ever want to use a sword, as attested by great swords, because swords didn't really come any bigger than that. I don't recommend jumping up to something like this either, because you need to build up strength in your wrist and you feel it as well. There's a chance you can injure yourself using something like this big without previous practice. <sighs> 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 Don't do that. The way to fix all that is if you had super strength as well, because the inertia of the sword is still much, much lower than your own inertia, three kilos compared to, uh, you know, average guy, probably between 80 to 100, depending. But if you're a muscly guy, I'm not saying muscly, but muscly guys tend to weigh a little bit heavier around the 100 mark. So if someone did have legitimate super strength, they would be able to use a great sword and swing it around probably to the same level as I could do with this one because it's so much lighter. This is less than an actual real long sword. And uh, yeah, you could definitely, you know, swing this one. And can you do the flourishes <laughs> a little bit maybe? But the thing you'll notice about the great sword is its proportions. Look how thin the blade is, how long the handle is. This only looks so big because the weight is kind of stretched out in length to get this massive thing. But if this blade was, say, thicker, you know, about, yay thick, so about as thick as you see certain fantasy swords, right? And were remained at this length, its weight would be crazy, and also its width. If it was much wider than the standard greatsword, even this wooden one has a much wider blade than you'd ever see on a real greatsword. And so if this was converted into steel at these exact proportions, this one would be way too heavy for a real greatsword. So yes, if this was thicker, this type of sword actually is approaching some of the, you know, sizes of fantasy swords that we see. And we'll get to swords like Cloud's Buster Sword, because even if this one was increased, we're not at Cloud's Buster Sword yet. That's when things really, really get interesting. Well, with increased size, as I was just talking about, you just need increased strength to be able to handle it. I, in my, you know, rough estimate, the uh, ratio difference, because say this weighed 20 kilos uh, as opposed to my almost 100. My inertia is still greater than it, but depending how much force I'm trying to put to it, when you actually try and accelerate it, because the inertia is so great, there's going to be a tendency for you to actually push yourself back as you try and swing this forward. But because your inertia is greater, you will be able to swing it into the attacks that you want. Now, how heavy are swords like Cloud's Buster Sword and Gut Sword uh, from Berserk? Well, from doing some quick research online, I found some interesting conclusions. There have been two prominent reproductions made of Cloud's Buster Sword. One by Man at Arms and one by the good old Michael Cthulhu. And what's interesting about the two is that the one made by Man at Arms actually looks to be much, much heavier. The guys using it actually need assistance in lifting it, where good old Michael is able to lift his own with difficulty, but by himself. Michael's one is made out of steel, yet the one in Man at Arms is made out of aluminium, but it seems heavier. And I think this comes down to the more subtle proportions that we can't really see. For instance, the width of the blade. You do get a good close-up look at the width of Michael's blade, and it looks to be 8mm to a centimetre thick. The thing is, that actually looks to be much, much thinner than how the sword is actually depicted in the video game and movies. With the more recent trailer of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, we get some close enough shots of Cloud and his Buster Sword. And indeed, when looking at these shots, we can get a fair enough estimate on how thick the sword really is. And from what it appears, this is like four to five centimeters. Four to five times thicker than Michael's sword. Now, of course, Michael wouldn't build one of the exact true proportions of Cloud's Buster Sword with the right thickness because, well, you simply wouldn't be able to lift it. Also, looking at the two side by side, Michael's does look to be that little bit shorter than the one from Man at Arms. But in any regard, I haven't been able to find the weight of Michael's reproductions. But in Man at Arms, they do mention that their one is an approximate weight of between 75 to 80 pounds. 
that's around 35 kilos. And their sword isn't built to the same thickness that Cloud's Buster sword is depicted as being in the video games. And on top of that, it is mostly made out of aluminium. Steel is two and a half times denser than aluminium, meaning if their sword was made out of steel, it would weigh an approximate of 87 kilos. On average, that's the same weight as a regular guy, but if the guy weighs up to 100, but still, that's the weight of a person. And this isn't even touching on the Dragon Slayer sword from Berserk. Look how thick that thing is. This would weigh over 100 kilos easily. Well, let's now pretend that this, you know, wooden great sword I'm holding is something like Cloud's Buster Sword in proper length. And so with the magic of editing, uh, Let's put the size blade on it that we often see in fantasy. The first major problems that we'll run into if I was holding a sword of, you know, 50 kilos, and depending on the width, the width, like, as soon as you double the width, it doesn't actually increase the profile size of the sword, but as soon as you double the width, you've doubled the effective weight of the sword. And so, say if this had a significant width, especially to the width that we see in anime and video games and stuff like that, it's not unreasonable to assume that a sword like this could weigh up to 100 kilos. And if this sword weighs as much as the person trying to hold it, this is what's gonna happen. If you had the super strength, actually lift it, because uh, you'd usually just drop it and you'd be like, eh. But if you had the super strength, the center of balance between this whole connected body now, because you, you're holding it, and so it's not just your own center of balance, the center of balance of the sword, it's gonna be somewhere around here, and you're gonna be going, like this. Indeed, if you do not have the proportional super weight, okay, to anchor yourself when holding a super-sized sword, even the standard stance that we see Cloud in and other things like this, you're gonna do this. Eh, because the center of balance is gonna be so far forward because the sword weighs so much. And the interesting thing when it comes to super strength is uh, the, the actual individuals, their weights are usually exactly the same as their normal weight. Generally, enhanced weight is not the same as enhanced super strength because you don't see them busting tires and stuff like that when they get sit in a car and the car suddenly all goes like that. Maybe the tires wouldn't bust, but you know, <laughs> on the suspension. So for general convenience in their, their superheroes everyday life, uh, their weight is not generally increased in a proportionate level to their increased super strength. And because of that, using super sized swords is <laughs> like, so if this sword weighed as much as you and you want to do a thrust, you're gonna throw yourself back and if you're gonna try and pull yourself into a, like if I wanted to do this motion, pulling the sword back is gonna throw me forward. And then when I throw it back, it's gonna go back like this because it's gonna be all around the center of balance between this massive sword I'm holding and my own weight. And we actually see this even in Michael Cthulhu's destruction videos. When he's got the sword, he can only hold them like this, right? He can't hold them out like that, <laughs> you know, good luck. Strength issues, of course, but it's also the major, you know, balance issues. He's got like this, and the main attack that he's able to do with him, and he curls it up and lets the weight drop him down. And so the stances of a type of combat with a super large sword is going to have to be where the sword's, is basically, the sword's weight is always balanced on top of your own balance. So you could hold it like this, not like that. You could hold it up like this, but as soon as you go back, you're going to go back with it. And the other thing, you know, we've been talking about, if you went through, you know, a super sized sword into a forward strength, strike, you're going to be throwing yourself back, and if you pull on it, you're going to be pulling yourself like this. What If you actually had an anchor to anchor yourself with your feet, where you could actually push off to accelerate the sword into a really forward strike, so, so you go, oh, you're trying to do, you know, big nice strike, accelerating a sword isn't the only issue. Slowing it down is a massive issue as well. Not a problem if, you know, if this was the real weight and if like, I can accelerate it and stop it without a problem. It's so light compared to my own weight. But if this weighed half as much as me or as much as me, and I had an anchor so I don't get pushed back in the strike, and I throw a strike like this, I'm not gonna be able to stop it down and so it's gonna pull me forward. I'm gonna go like, Ooh, like this, and completely lose my balance. And can you imagine a yeah, thrust? So yeah, if you have an anchor, and you, instead of just doing this, right, you can actually accelerate this sword's weight into a forward thrust, how are you going to stop it? You now have 50 to 100 kilos flying forward that you're holding on to. You've basically attached yourself to a tow truck and you fly it forward and, you, and you're going to go with it. And so the only way to prevent something like that is if you had, instead of something to push off on, you had something holding your feet in place. So perhaps if you were a, you know, a superhero with super light, huge strength and your weight, as is normally depicted, isn't increased 
to, at the same proportional uh, rate, perhaps if you had special shoes that like dug sentin bolts to the ground every time you took a step, bolts shot into the ground, anchoring yourself so you could actually do these huge things, accelerate the sword, so you say you did for thrust, and you're trying to get pulled, but your feet are holding yourself in place. But if you don't have the uh, proportional resistance to injury, that could rip off your legs or snap your ankles. So do you see the problems involved? There's a bit of an easy answer to figure these problems out in regards to the proportional weight difference with supersized swords to yourself. And that's if the sword, well, even though incredibly big, was incredibly light for its size. You could get away with it then. And uh, the max you know, weight, if, you're, if your own weight was to remain the same, between 80 to 100 kilos for an average guy, the approximate figure that comes to my mind, and this is just me kind of spitting into the wind here, I would assume would be maybe 20 kilos is the maximum weight you want for a sword. It'd still be very difficult, but because your own inertia is so much greater, you should be in a position where you can accelerate and slow down the sword and actually use it functionally. But a Clouds Buster sword, Guts whatever sword, uh, they don't seem that light. They actually seem incredibly heavy from what we see in the movies, games, and stuff like that. So with the problems that we've just been able to discover, are there still practical reasons why you might want such a large sword separate to it looking awesome? Well, first of all, you can still get exceptionally large swords that are still within a modest weight. And when I say modest weight, I'm meaning far under 100 or even 50 kilos. If you were to take a standard greatsword and increase its blade width, and even length by a little bit, its weight would still be within around 6 kilos. And for someone with super strength, that is a very conservative, reasonable, and functional weight. And the interesting thing about this, the amount of energy that you'd be able to produce through linear momentum, you know, swinging the sword in rotation, combined with their own super strength, would be phenomenal. They would be able to generate such massive levels of force on the point of percussion of their sword, so much greater than just throwing up punch with their super strength. So therefore, a sword is actually still a very useful tool for someone with super strength. The problem that you would then face is that the energy you would be able to produce in combination with your super strength and, you know, linear momentum with the sword, it would be so great, it would exceed the structural strength of the material that the sword is made out of. That's one of the things that I don't see addressed often, and I guess that's because we say fantasy material and stuff like that, but if Cloud's Buster Sword or Gut Sword or many of the swords that we see in fantasy were actually made out of real world materials, steel being the more common one, they would snap and bend in two with the level of energy that they'd be able to produce if they were just able to be accelerated to the speed of a standard sword strike. So there needs to be some type of incredible material that this sword would have to be built out of, and if it was, well then you have a very potent force multiplier to use in conjunction with your super strength. And of course we have fictional materials, adamantium, vibranium, mithril, Valerian steel. But of course, when you get into the realms of the insanely large swords, the ones that would weigh between 50 to 100 kilos, you then have all the problems that we've just talked about. But anyway, this was just a fun, casual kind of exploration on the real world physics of using super swords in real life if you had enough strength to do so. There's a lot of impracticality involved, and unfortunately it shows that our, the shows that we love in our video games are horribly unrealistic, but of course, it's fun. I get it, okay? Sometimes you don't want to say it's fun, but if you're wanting to add a realistic element to things like this, oh well, well these are some th interesting things to consider. And so in summary, uh, you would either need to be of a much greater weight in percentage to the weight of the sword. So if the sword weighed 100 kilos, to offset it, you'd probably want to weigh 500. Or the sword has to just be extremely, extremely light. Uh, but with light, how, how do you get the strength, okay? So it has to be some mystical, fantasy, or scientific material. And there we go. That is it. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. And of course, I hope to see you again. Until then, farewell.